Thanks for helping me out during the ceremony. I had no idea what I was supposed to do. You don't know Latin, do you? Don't worry. Work in the scriptorium will teach you fast enough. Why exactly are you here? Was it your choice? Or did someone force you to come? I'm being punished. If it were up to me, I'd still be spending my days in taverns and my nights with whores. I don't envy you. Unfortunately, you're here for the rest of your life. Would you tell me something about yourself? I'm a novice and I'm here because I'd make a poor merchant. I like books and I want an education. Although I must say, so far the monastic life's been quite... unexpected. Let's go then. Good. But before we do, here's a letter directly from the prior telling you all your regular duties from tomorrow onwards. Make sure to read it this evening, so you know how things work. Right, we can go now. Follow me closely. I'll explain everything as we go. Remember one word. Discipline. It's your job to work and pray. You serve the Lord now, not your own bodily needs. Salve Domine. Come now, I don't want to still be showing you around at midnight. This is the way to the dormitory, where we all sleep. You'll find a free bed there, which is now yours. Do you know the first thing the monastery taught me? To appreciate sleep. We rise before dawn every day. Takes a bit of getting used to. Salve. Be well. Come now, I don't want to still be showing you around at midnight. This is the garden, a place for silent contemplation and meditation. Centuries ago, this monastery was founded by the most esteemed of brothers, St. Procopius. His earthly remains can be found in a cave under the monastery, and his spirit wanders the corridors at night, punishing any misbehaving novices. <laughs> So beware. Here are the fratery and scriptorium, together with the library. These are the places where we work. Ora et labora. Pray and work. As a novice, you must always listen to your superior brethren. And above us monks are the prior and the circators, who punish every infraction. You'll know them by the canes they carry. Do what they say. This is the refectory, where we come together to eat. During meals, you must be silent. Only one brother reads aloud from the rule of Saint Benedict. The rule is the only law we recognize, with the exception of those from God himself. If you break any of its precepts, The library, the pride of our monastery, a trove of learning. We don't just read books here, we also copy them. You too will learn how. And that's all. Today you are still free from duty, but tomorrow you begin work like the others. If you need anything, ask any of the brothers. We will be glad to help you. And I recommend you get to know the other novices. You already know me. Then there is Siskin, Yodok, and Lucas. Thanks for showing me around. There's a lot to learn here. The 
The forbidden books must oh, be in that cabin. Are you cabinet. interested in what's inside? I'm Gregor, a novice. I saw you at the ceremony. I know. It was hard not to notice you. And you are? Lucas, also a novice. Don't get upset, but I don't want to talk to you. I'm happiest alone. Listen, brother. Is there anyone in the monastery who can help me get hold of something, um, well, something that's not so readily available? Oh, yes? And what sort of thing are you talking about exactly? Forget about it, brother, and focus on prayer and work. Will you tell me something about yourself? I, there's nothing I can tell you. I mean, where you're from, what sort of life you had before, that sort of thing. I'm a novice, and my monastic name is Lucas. Nothing else matters. Come on. Is there really nothing at all you can tell me? I could, but I don't want to. I'm sorry. I want to stay focused on work and prayer, not on who I once was. I never will be again. What has been isn't important for us. We cast the past aside when we walked through the monastery gates and took our oath. Never forget that. My name's Gregor, a novice. You can call me Siskin. Now, are you here of your own free will or is this a punishment? Although it's not important. Welcome to purgatory. Did you say purgatory? You'll see soon enough. Soon enough. Will you tell me something about yourself? Look, nothing against you, but I prefer not to talk about my past. Very well. I won't ask. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'd be interested to hear what you think about the other novices. Tell me about Antonius. I've read one of the oh, if there was a monk I'd recommend as a friend, with, of course, the exception of myself, it would be Antonius. He has a calm soul, he's easy to talk to, and you can always rely on him. What can you tell me about Lucas? It's a tricky situation with Lucas. No one really knows anything about him. I've tried so many times to talk to him, but he always backs away like a virgin on a wedding night. That's all. Thanks. Greetings, brother. I'm Gregor, and I'm new here. Greetings to you, brother. I'm Yodok, the oldest of the novices. I hope you'll like it here in the monastery and that you won't get into trouble. Trouble? I'm telling you, You're young, perhaps intemperate. You might easily stray from the rules of the order. I suggest you get to know the older monks. You never know when it might come in handy. Can you tell me something about yourself? I would if there was anything noteworthy to say. But I'm just the ordinary son of a landowner. Now a monk. There's nothing in my past, present... Our future that anyone could find interesting. Why did you join the monastery? Because it was better than living in poverty. As the youngest son, I'm not entitled to inherit my father's estate. But he was kind enough to sell off some cattle and send me here. And you know what? I'm glad to be here. It's better than mucking out manure. I'm Gregor, a novice. I know. I saw you at the ceremony. My name is Neblus, and I'm the provost here. I'm in charge of the monastery's property, as well as handling trade with the outside world. 
That means you get to leave the monastery? No, not at all. I just write lists and send them out. Tell me about yourself. I'm the provost of this monastery. It's my job to ensure the monks live a humble life and that any surpluses go to the poor. But in reality, I spend all my time making sure my brother's gluttony and the construction of a new church don't swallow up the few resources we have left. Is there anything I could help with? You know, there is. Perhaps you've heard that Abbot Peter is gravely ill. I'm interested in medicine, and I know there's a cure for the abbot's ailment. With your help, I could find out the details, and together you and I could give old Peter a few more years to do good. What do you say? What do you need me for? In order to get the recipe for this medicant, a few rules will need to be broken. Now you know most of the brothers believe every illness is a message from God and that it's not our place to deny his will. I, however, think if God sent us not just illnesses, but also the medicine to cure them, then it's our duty to relieve people of their suffering. The cure for Abbot Peter's illness could be contained in one of the books in our library, but it will certainly be amongst the Libri Prohibiti, the forbidden books, those we aren't permitted to read. Is there anything you can tell me that would help? There's a key to the cabinet in the prior's chambers. The librarian should have another one, or you can acquire some lockpicks. But I can't tell you where or how. Perhaps Brother Solarius could help. Where can I find it? In the library, there's a large cabinet with a lock on it. The forbidden books are inside. You'll easily recognize what you're looking for. The cover has not only a Latin inscription, but also Saracen letters. Bring it to me, but leave the other books there. No one will notice if one book disappears, but if more were to vanish, someone would certainly begin to look into it, which is exactly what we don't want. Why can't you do it yourself? Because I am one of the highest ranking monks here, and one day I'd like to become abbot. Can you imagine me crawling around in the black of night searching for a forbidden book? You could just ask for it. Do you honestly think I haven't tried? Unfortunately, Librarian Cyril is a stubborn ass. I'm ready. One more important thing. There's always someone in the library during the day. To pass unwatched, you'll need to go at night. It's locked, but I'm sure you'll manage to get in. They say Brother Solarius understands locks, but don't tell him why you need it. Once you have the book, bring it to me, and I'll then use it to make Peter's medicine. We'll soon have the election of the abbot over and done with.
It looks like I found a little monastic treasure trove. I wonder who stuffs that here. You've seen us drinking here, so either join in or swear you won't tell a soul. You wouldn't want to end up like Lucas now, would you? I don't want to drink with you, but I promise I won't say a word to anyone. You youngsters have got no backbone. Still, remember what you promised. One word about this and we'll make your life hell. And if you ever decide you want to have some fun after all, you know where to find us. I could do with a bite to eat. What is it, brother? What's there left to drink to? To our fresh young novices, our swift steeds, and our boundless cellars. You and your novices, you old pervert. A toast to our future abbot. I'll drink to that. So, to John, the future abbot, and a pox on Nevelus. Praise be to Christ, brother. What are you doing here? What does it look like, drinking? But we're all monks. Youngster, when you're as old as I, you'll understand. Why not? I've had enough opprobria and obediencia for one day. That's what we like to hear. I'd like to ask you... I'll say one thing, brother. This wine would grace the Pope's table. I'm not so sure. It's a bit sour. God knows what's in it. Don't be absurd. It's a first-class cask, direct from Znoimo. No, I know the taste of a good vintage, and this isn't it. I bet you that wretch Yoro got the cask mixed up. Nonsense. It's perfectly drinkable. No, it isn't. It's sour. No matter. We'll get more soon. So, good health. Good health. We'll have to take. Talk to me, bro. Where'd you get the wine from? I thought the monastery cellars were guarded. So they are, but this wine isn't from the monastery. Listen, lad, would you help us out with something? This cask is almost empty, and we need a new one. We're a bit old for such exertions. But you, on the other hand... I'll help you. What do I need to do? Ha! I knew it. Help novice Jodok arrange for a new cask. Talk to him first thing in the morning, and by tomorrow night the cask can be on the table. All right. I'll talk to him. Ah, down the hatch. Every golden tree isn't that the truth. No wonder.
To that end, we think that the times for each may be prescribed as follows. By reverence. But as for coarse jests and idle words, or words that move to laughter, these we condemn everywhere with a perpetual ban. And for such conversation, we do not permit a disciple to open his mouth. Ah, Gregor, talk to me. I'm here to work. Excellent. I've been waiting for you. There's the alchemist's laboratory. You'll find ingredients in the chests next to it. Concoct two buck's blood potions. Once you finish them, you'll find me somewhere nearby. Don't forget to let me know when you're done so I can check them. Check everyone's breath in the morning. Then he'd soon get his man.
Ah, Gregor, talk to me. I've finished my work. Show me what you've made. Spectacular, Gregor. You've found your talent. Soon enough, you'll be teaching the other novices. What would you like? I'm here to work. Good. This is most likely the first time you've ever done this in your life. But it's easier than you think. Just a bit of practice and learning Latin. Here's the original, and here are the blank parchments on which you'll copy what you read in the original. Is that clear? Then you may begin, and try not to make a mess of it. Oh no, such a waste of parchment. How could you? What would you like? I've heard about Avicenna's book of medicine. Could I see it? Who told you about that? Of course you can't. I found this piece of parchment. It looks like it's been ripped out of a book. Do you know what it is? Hmm. It appears to be a page torn out of Ovid. Ovid? What is that? Is it the name of a book? Not what, but who? Ovid was a great Roman poet. We have a few volumes by him in the library, but one of them vanished one day. Now I believe I can guess what happened. Brother Eustace, may the earth rest lightly on him, was quite narrow-minded when it came to classical literature. If a book had any mention of woman at all, he condemned it as a heretical work. If he'd had his way, all such books would have been burned. Ovid's The Art of Love must have been such a thorn in his side that he stole it from the library, tore it up, and hid the pages wherever he could. Oh, would you like me to put the book back together again? Absolutely. Eustace's wits weren't the sharpest, so I'm sure he didn't destroy any of the pages. I imagine he hid them throughout the monastery. It might take you a while to find them all, but when you do, you can rest assured Ovid will return to his rightful place in the library. Good. I'll look around for it. Thank you, brother. It's of no great importance, but if you can find all ten pages, I'll be most grateful. Where should I look? 
If I knew, I wouldn't have asked you to do it. The pages of the book could be hidden anywhere, from the garden to the refectory. I'd like to ask you something about the monastery. Who's in charge of things around here? Abbot Peter is the administrator of the monastery, but you won't see him. He's always traveling, and on top of that, he's old and infirm. Perhaps the good Lord will bless him with many more years of life. And what happens when the old abbot dies? Then we elect a new one. What would you like? I'm Gregor, a novice. I know. But I've no time for idle chat. I transcribe books from dawn till dusk. I've been doing it for years and I'll be doing it till the day I die. What, you do nothing else? It is my penance and my blessing. And now, brother, if you don't mind, I'd like to get this page finished. Talk to me, brother. I was talking last night with the brother Circators. It seems you're to fetch them a cask of wine. Like last time. Hey, well... Yes, it's true. I'd like to help you. Would you really do it? To get hold of the wine, we'll have to leave the monastery for a bit. I, I know it's forbidden, but we've no other option. If wine started going missing here, someone would notice. But to leave the monastery, we need the keys. And only the prior has those. Wait a moment. Are you saying I'm supposed to steal the prior's keys so I can go and steal wine somewhere else? You see why I don't want to do it myself now, do you? I don't have what it takes. I, I can't get those keys, but you could. Oh, or you might be able to pick the locks. But you've done it once before, haven't you? Last time, the prior was sick, and he left the monastery keys in the Sir Cater's care. So they unlocked the gates for me. This time we'll have to steal the keys. How can I get hold of the keys, do you think? I don't know, but it might be possible to do this without them. Brother Solarius, the cellar keeper, used to be a burglar. He knows his way around locks, and, and maybe he could help us, if you could find a way to arrange it. Do you think he'll want to take part in theft? No, but he could give some advice, or maybe get some lockpicks to open the gate. You'll figure something out. If you think so, I can try. Once you have the key or some lockpicks, come and see me and we'll make our plan. The well disposed and those of good understanding, let him correct with verbal admonition the first and second time. But bold, hard, what proud, would you like? disobedient characters, he should curb at the very beginning of their ill doing by stripes. I'm looking for something a little um unorthodox. And what would that be exactly? And again, beat your son with a rod, and you will deliver his soul. I'm looking for lock picks. Lock picks, and what would you like those for? What's it to you? Do you have some or not? Peace, brother. There's no need to get all worked up. So you heard I used to be a burglar, did you? I put it all behind me as soon as I took the vows. But I do have a few lock picks left. 
I'll trade them for food. Get me a bite to eat, and you can have your lockpicks. Can't say fairer than that, can I? Ah, Gregor, talk to me. About those keys. Did you get them? Keys? Oh, at least lockpicks. Yes, I have them. In that case, come before midnight to the cloister garden. I'll be waiting for you there, and we'll head off. What troubles you? Here I am. Just in time to manage it all. Once we're outside, we'll need to be careful and we'll need to be quick. If we're not back before sunrise, someone will realize we've gone and there'll be hell to pay. Where exactly are we going for the wine? Next to the monastery is the house of the custodian, a baron who provides military protection to the monastery. We'll take the wine from him. Why go to all that trouble? Aren't the monastery wine cellars full? They are. But Brother Solarius keeps records of all the casks, and the prior checks them. They'd investigate if any went missing. Whereas, if someone outside loses the odd cask, they're not going to suspect as monks. That does sound reasonable. How do we do that once we're there? Will we need to break into the custodian cellar? We needn't break in anywhere. It's on the ground floor and usually unlocked. It holds supplies for the whole craftsman's yard and every now and again someone comes in to fetch something. The only thing we have to make sure is that nobody sees us. What particular wine are the cicadas after? They want some Znoimor wine. But there's no way we'll be able to tell what's what. We'll just grab a cask and head off. I doubt the custodian would have anything of poor quality in his cellar. The brothers will complain. They'll complain even more if they've nothing to drink at all. I'm ready. We can head off. All right. You have the outside keys, so get on locking.
Wonderful. Now you have to be quick. Go, and don't let anyone see you or there'll be trouble. Wait, what do you mean I have to be quick? Aren't we going together? You know, it's better if I stay here. One fellow attracts half the attention of two. Just go. This isn't what we agreed. Either we both go, or no one goes. Oh, come on, Gregor. Don't be like that. The circators are waiting for their wine. You don't want to let them down. Like I said, I'm not going alone. To hell with you, Gregor. You know we're going to get into trouble for this. Who's there? Vessels with quicksilver in them. I'll say one thing. Hey, you're a fine fellow. Show us what you've been hiding. Hmm. Turnipy nose with just the slightest hint of rat droppings. 
Not too lardy, like the last one. Nice, sharp elbows. It's not Olomolts, nor Znoimo either. But as John says, drinkable enough. Thank you, brothers. And now sit down and share a cup.